Alrighty, I'm going to do a quick video on this. This is Illuminati, the card game of conspiracy. And it's the deluxe edition. I think this one came out about 95, 1995. And the reason why I'm doing a video on this, for one, it's an awesome game. Um, it's really fun to play. And two, a lot of people are looking at this and saying, well, this is, um, you know, the people who made this game were in the know and involved in Satanism. And, you know, this game is prophetic and all the cards and stuff in here are harbingers of what's to come. And somehow they knew and blah, 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 blah. I want to debunk a lot of that. No, I'm not debunking larger conspiracy theories because I believe in a lot of them. But that particular one, I mean, I don't really know the belief systems of the people who made this game other than they were of the time of the 90s and very familiar with conspiracies topics. And it actually goes back before that. This game, this version of the game, I actually have never played, even though I bought it the second it came out. And I'll explain that in just a second. Here's the version of the game that I am familiar with. This is the deluxe edition that came out in 1986. The first version of the game came out in 1982. <coughs> I had this one in high school and we played it quite a bit. And it was a great game, it's a fun game. It pokes a lot of fun at conspiracy stuff, but at the same time it does familiarize you with the concepts of a lot of how the world might work <laughs> or does work. But anyway, I'll use this version to kind of go through it, and then I'll go through this version over here. Um, so what's left of my tatter box, and just to show how much I really like this game, I've probably gone through about 15 moves since then, and I had probably hundreds of role-playing games and, and board games and stuff, and now I just have a few, and both of these versions made the cut. So this is the rule book, um, and it's been, you know, a long time since I played, but basically what it is, is at the beginning of the game, you kind of, these would be the Illuminati cards here, you shuffle the deck, and then you pull out one secret society or Illuminati that is, um, there's a couple more of them, these aren't all of them, these are just the ones I see at the top here, um, and then you fight each other for control of the world. And I believe depending on what Illuminati group you have, you have different uh, winning conditions. Um, and that's probably outlined in here. I'm not going to go through that though. But anyway, roughly how the game works is you see these arrows. There's these cards that are played each turn. Like this one would be in this version of the game, Hackers. And you can attack it as long as you can line up and you see how here it says weird and fanatic. If you are weird and fanatic, then you get a bonus to attack. And basically you take your power plus a bunch of money that you can spend like this. This income is eight, which is pretty good for the society of assassins. And you can neutralize groups, which means you can take them off the board slash destroy them, or you can control them. And sometimes like with these guys, if you're trying to keep another player who might have an Illuminati over here, this is what? Uh, the Bermuda, playing the Bermuda Triangle, and they can reorganize their groups at one, all, all the time, which is pretty powerful. Their income's good. Their power's good. This is a pretty good group. So say they're over here, and they're fighting you, and they've got a bunch of cards. Um, they can spend money against your attempt to attack the hackers to try to stop you. And they can also try to break your arm. Like, let's say you had another card. Um, let's say you had science fiction fans under your control. And each of these gives you income and power. The hackers are kind of good because they have transferable power. So if... if um, Say you had another guy over here, like a Mafia, that's a good card. So you got the Mafia over here, and if the Mafia is trying to attack and take over, say, um, the CIA, 
which you as another player over here would not want to let happen because those are both too powerful cards. So this person would be getting too powerful. So probably the whole table would gang up and try to keep that from happening. But um, yeah, depending on how you match up with their values, you get pluses or minuses. The money you have on this card can be used to attack plus your transferable card power, the slash eight here, plus your slash one for the hackers. So it, you get a, a big bonus and you roll a dice out here. I don't know what that is. <coughs> and then you either control the cord or the other players stop you. And then other players can also attack this one. And I don't remember how that works, but they can bust your whole arm off. And then each tur new turn, new cards go out in the middle like Boy Scouts. And then you have the option to do a couple things. You can reorganize your, your branches. You can try to gain this, this card. I think you had two actions, but again, it's been a long time since I played, but that's not the focus of this. So anyway, I love this game and uh, I'd love to find people that can play it, but let's go through the newer version where everybody gets weird. Um, but anyway, you can kind of see how, you know, mafia attempts to take over the CIA. It's like you're playing it. You're reading some conspiratorial headlines um, from the eighties newsroom, you know, and it gets you thinking and it kind of, in a way teaches you how possibly the world may work. I don't know. But anyway, um, let's get into the newer version. And like I said, I haven't really played the newer version. I bought it because I love the game, but my life had changed. That was high school, lots of free time. I got this post-college and uh, no one gamed anymore. That was in my circle and uh, not a whole lot of free time. But this version, Updates the artwork really cool artwork Updates the cards. So they're more modern like virtual pets. There were no virtual pets around here And again, it's just kind of fun to play because you're having the FBI try to take over like virtual pets um, And you've got all these networks TV preachers and Control NASA um, in the newer version, there's more of these special cards, or this is Evil Genius, this is a normal card. Let me find some of the special event cards. There were some of these in the older version, but it seems like there's a lot more of them. Like this one's Assassination, uh, Rioting, Reorganization, you can reorganize your cards. And this would be the cards that as when it's your turn, you draw out of a random pile, that way they'd be all turned over. And then if you get that card, you can you can either leave it, go after another group that's out here, do another action, or you can, for your action, just take that card, and then you can play it then or hold it, I believe. So anyway, what happened is, is because this is all into the lore of conspiracy theories, they, like, I'm not going to dig through all these cards, even though they're all fun to look at, and man, I wish I'd play this game again. Um... Maybe I'll try to get some people to play. Um, people kind of read a little bit too much into them. Like, I know one card here. I don't know. Like, I think this is the base game, and there's also some packs. I might have bought one pack. I don't think I did. So this is the base game, and then there's some packs to it as well. Um, and I think either in the base game or the packs, there's some. There's some. There's a picture of like. Um, that's funny, Steve Jackson games. I don't do that's in other games they make. There's um, pictures of like the Twin Towers getting exploded by an airplane. The thing is, is that's somebody from this period of time, the 90s, when this game was read, those concepts were not unknown. Um, that's where I think people kind of get tripped up, is they think that, you know, like... They're looking at things from their perspective. They're a little bit maybe self-absorbed, the younger conspiracy hipsters that don't understand that all of these topics and stuff were well known and talked about. You forget that in the 90s, there was a uh, attempt to blow up the World Trade Center. I'll just throw out some cards here. And um, drug companies, uh, conspiracy theorists, that's funny. And... Um, so the fact that there's a card in here with that as like an event, a lot of people go, oh, they knew something was coming. They were in the know. They were like satanic and, and um, 
knew that the World Trade Towers would be blown up and this game's like prophetic and stuff. It's not because all those ideas of the potential of those things were happening and the mistrust of society, the way less ingrained now was alive and well in the 90s. And just to prove that point to you, someone who I hope you will not think is a Satanist, I don't know, maybe you will. Um, I bought this book recently, and this book is titled Black is Beautiful, and it's by Pastor Peter S. Ruckman. And in this book, it's coming from the exact same era. I think it came out one year later. 1995 maybe this came out in 94 i forget i looked it up but i mean you look at the table of content cfr the cia and the supreme king arthur's court um the gods from outer space and black holes um professional liars ufos you know <coughs> all the topics that we talk about today in conspiracy circles like if you look in the preview here the reason why it's called Black is Beautiful is he's kind of being um, facetious or whatever. But Black Fun, Black Helicopters, Black Cadillacs, like the Men in Black, Black Uniforms. Um, you know, some communist groups he goes into. Um, black Magic, Blacklist, Black Mail. And all through this book are all topics that play into the general knowledge and it's just an example of everything that the game designers hear that in some ways are maybe being serious but in a lot of ways are just poking fun of you know how cons conspiracy theorists believe things operate and using the knowledge that was available on like out conspiracy on the nntp news groups and stuff like that so <laughs> I think this proves that contextually there's you'd find almost everything in here talked about in here. And if you went on the internet, if archive.org isn't being hacked still, you could maybe go through out conspiracy theories, you know, between or out conspiracy theory, the NNTP news group, if there's archives of it from like, you know, the mid nineties on till you know, maybe 2000 where all these topics were discussed. So these people <laughs> were knowledgeable. Steve Jackson games. You got people like Ken Height, who's one of their game designers. I don't think he was involved directly with this game, but you know, they, they're very aware of esoteric knowledge per se, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily Satanists. They're just paying attention to, they were early adopters of what a lot of people think about the world today and that doesn't mean that they are witches maybe they are i don't know but all it means is that they were paying attention to what was being discussed and they took a great game from the 80s that was into that as well and just revised it for a 1990 mid 90s worldview and to get a good contextual version of what all those views were and how they were not just limited to the game designers of Steve Jackson games, but were actually pretty prevalent. And here is one example of that. I'm actually looking forward to reading this book. Um, you know, I've skimmed it. And I've been a conspiracy theorist since I got saved as a born-again Christian since 1989 because that was enough to, to kind of show me that the world's a little different than maybe I thought it was. So it left me open to these type of to views. So anyway, beyond that, I don't think playing this game is like playing a Ouija board or anything. I love this game. It's just a fun card game. And some of the, the combinations that you make, like having a big war between the Bavarian Illuminati and the society of assassins over who controls um, the, you know, it might be like conspiracy theorists or floor, floridators or hackers or any of that stuff. It just kind of, it makes you think a little bit about the world behind the scenes that you hear in headlines where there's these weird economic ties with everything. And it's just, it's, it's funny. It's fun. It's actually a great game. There's a little bit of deceptiveness in the beginning where you can kind of hide your identity too. People have to guess which uh, group you are. 
And I just remember having many fun nights playing this version. For some reason, it always gets flipped on me. It's weird. So, yeah, great game. Highly recommend it. Um, it does touch on some trippy stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that because it's aware of conspiracy type ideas that it's dark prophecy and tapped into dark magic or that Satan was somehow involved in the book. And you can look through, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like societal archaeology to see kind of what similar views were of the time that show you that the views that made this game weren't unique. Other people were thinking about future attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon because they're, um, they're basically symbols of American power. And so you knew that asymmetrically an enemy would try to target those if they were going to hit us. And there was already evidence that they were hitting us because they hit us in the 90s. So I think all this kind of taking things too far and thinking this is like witchery or something, I think is is dumb. But as a game, highly recommend it. It's fun. I'd probably recommend this, the older version. I don't know if you can still find it. But the cards, eh, the cards are updated here. Um, so it might be more relevant, I guess. Some of these things, like there was a group called Copy Shops. You know, no one's going to Copy Shops pretty much anymore. Or back when this was written, those were big things. You know, so there's societal things that change. I mean, they can even do a mid-220 decade version and add in, you know, AI and stuff like that, which would be fun. Um, and again, this version does have some power packs where you buy additional cards. So I don't know, maybe they'll keep this version but come out with some additional cards for it. And, uh, yeah, look at alt conspiracy from that time period. Books like this, there are plenty of them. Gary Kahl wrote a bunch of conspiracy books about around this time. Lots of, lots of stuff in the 90s. So this, this perspective is not unique nor prophetic is, I guess, the takeaway. And it's a great game. A lot of fun. So there's my review and my debunking. Uh, let me know what you think, where you disagree. Thanks.